very good morning all so last class we learned about the invertebrate phylum today we have to start with the next phylum that is phylum chordata they are actually vertebrates are coming under phylum chordata and we'll see the main features the main defining features of phylum chordata now and phylum chordata actually the first defining feature is the presence of notochord what do you mean by notochord it's actually a skeletal element which is cartilaginous skeletal element which develop into the vertebral column so the presence of notochord is one of the main feature of phylum chordata notochord means it's actually the cartilaginous skeletal element which develop further in when when it comes to higher organism it will get developed into vertebral column the next feature is a dorsal hollow nerve cord that nerve cord is actually a part of central nervous system which later on develop to form the brain and the spinal cord so dorsal hollow nerve cord which develop to form the brain and spinal cord is another feature of phylum chordata then the third one is paired pharyngeal gill slits gill slits which develop into the lungs pharynx near to the region of pharynx the gill slits are present or the lens in higher organism that is actually becoming lungs then post anal tail post anal tail is the next feature of phylum chordata these are the main or the defining features of phylum chordata that is the presence of notochord presence of a dorsal hollow nerve cord paired by the pharyngeal gills and post anal tail a tail okay after anus a tail will be present so these are the main features of phylum chordata and the general features include they have a bilateral symmetry that we know we have learned about bilateral symmetry they have a bilateral symmetry they are triploblastic that is three germ layers are per present three layers of cells are present in the germinal condition then coelome they have coelome then organ system level of organization so these are the main features of phylum chordata now we have to see how this phylum chordata has been classified now we will see the classification of phylum chordata the phylum chordata is classified into three sub phylums this is phylum chordata is classified into three sub phylums under phylum sub phylums are coming so uh, three sub phylums that is eurochordata cephalochordata and vertebrata so the phylum chordata is classified into three sub phylums eurochordata cephalochordata and vertebrata now we'll see the features of eurochordata and cephalochordata and then come back features of eurochordata and cephalochordata actually the phylum chordata is divided into three sub phylums eurochordata cephalochordata and vertebrata so now we will see the features of eurochordata and cephalochordata eurochordata the animals are exclusively marine they can be seen only in marine environment notochord present only in the larval tail on the tail of the larvae notochord is present only in the tail of larvae and examples for that uh, include acidia salpa doliola you can see the figures of these animals so this is acidia it includes acidia salpa doliola and all so these are aquatic they are actually marine the next sub phylum is cephalochordata the animals are exclusively marine like eurochordata they are also exclusively marine animals the notochord extend from head to tail region and is persistent throughout their life so for them the notochord extend from head to tail region and it is persistent throughout their life in case of eurochordata we learned it is present only in the larval stage but here it is persistent throughout their life examples include amphioxus or lancelet brachiostoma so we'll see the figure of amphioxus so this is actually amphioxus which belong to 
subphylum cephalochordata subphyla urochordata and cephalochordata are often referred to as protochordates protochordates means primitive pre so protochordates it's like chordates the early chordates so subphyla urochordata and cephalochordata are often referred to as protochordates now we have seen the features of subphylum urochordata and cephalochordata now we will learn about the subphylum vertebrata subphylum vertebrata the organisms of subphylum vertebrata they have a notochord which is present in the embryonic stage and later on when it become adult it will it may change into cartilaginous or skeletal vertebral cord so they have notochord in the embryonic stage and in the adult stage that will be converted to either cartilaginous or skeletal vertebral cord and these vertebrata all the vertebrates are chordates and all the chordates are not vertebrates that anyway we know all the chordates will not be vertebrates because in that urochordate and cephalochordate are also coming so subphylum vertebrata now we'll see the some of the main features of subphylum vertebrata they have a ventral muscular heart with two chamber it may be three chamber or it may be four chambers that depend on the organism they have a muscular heart but that may heart the chambers will be two three or four and they may have a kidney for the process of excretion so for the process of excretion they may have a kidney for osmoregulation and also for excretion and then they have paired gill cells or the lungs are present appendages are present and paired appendages are present for the vertebral cord so they have again once again i'll repeat they have ventral muscular heart with two three or four chamber then kidney is present for the process of excretion or osmoregulation and they have paired appendages like limbs may be present it may be fins limbs or anything then they have lungs for the process of respiration they have Uh, gill slits for the process of respiration so these are the main features of subphylum vertebrata now this subphylum vertebrata is again classified into two divisions that is acnada and nadostomata acnada means jawless organism jaw means the lower yeah it is present in the lower chain so jaw is not present in acnada and nadostomata bears jaw we will see the features of acnada and the examples of acnadans and then come back now we will learn the features of acnada acnada is coming under subphylum vertebrata actually they lacks jaw jawless animals acnada include jawless animals and acnada includes the class cyclostomata so class cyclostomata comes under acnada so members are ectoparasite on other fishes so the members of the cyclostomata class cyclostomata lives on the body of other fishes like ectoparasites you can see here these are actually the members of cyclostomata they live on the body of other fish features they are characterized by sucking circular mouth without jaw they don't have jaw we can see the mouth of the members of the cyclostomata they are circular mouth they are have characterized by a sucking circular mouth they don't have jo this is how its mouth will be and they have an elongated body which is without scales and paired fins so they don't have scales and they have fins they have fins and they have a elongated body they possess 6 to 15 pairs of gill slits for respiration so they have 
gill slits, six to sixteen pairs of gill slits can be seen on its body for the process of respiration. The cranium and the vertebral column is made up of cartilage. Actually, the cranium and the cranium is the covering of brain. The cranium and the vertebral column is made up of cartilage. Cyclostomes are marine. But migrate for spawning. Spawning means laying egg. So they migrate to lay eggs to fresh water. They migrate to fresh water for laying eggs and die after spawning. So after spawning, they will die. Cyclostomes are marine, but they migrate to fresh water for spawning and they die after spawning. That's their feature. Examples of cyclostomata include petromycin and hackfish or mixed sign. So, these are the examples for cyclostomata. Now, we have seen about the acnaga, division acnaga. Now, we can go to the next division that is nathostomata, which bears jaw. This nathostomata is also again classified into two superclasses. And that super classes include Pisces and Tetrapoda. So the Nathostomata is divided into two super classes, Pisces and Tetrapoda. Pisces mostly fishes, right? So we will learn about the Pisces and Tetrapoda includes various classes. Classes. Which are the classes which coming under tetrapoda? That is amphibia, reptilia, then avis and mammalia. Amphibia, reptilia, avis and mammalia will come under superclass tetrapoda. So we will see the features of Pisces and the different classes which are coming under tetrapoda and then come back. Nadus tomato. So, after Acnada, the vertebrata is divided into two divisions, Acnada and Nathostomata. So, next, Nathostomata include Pisces and Tetrapoda. So, we will learn about the Pisces, the first superclass Pisces. Nathostomata is divided into two superclasses, Pisces and Tetrapoda. We will learn about Pisces now. Pisces includes fishes actually. So, Pisces is divided into two classes. Superclass Pisces is divided into two classes. Chondrichthys and Ostichthys. Class Chondrichthys. Class Ostichthys. Now, about class Chondrichthys. They are marine. They have a streamlined body. Streamlined body means tapering at both ends. And have cartilaginous endoskeleton. That is their main specialty. They have their endoskeleton made up of cartilage. And they are cold blooded. They have tough skin with minute placoid scales. Scales is the placoid scale means it's actually because of its shape. You don't have to learn all that in that detail. They have minute Placoid scales all over the body. So they are marine, streamlined body, have cartilaginous endoskeleton, cold blooded, tough skin with minute placoid scales. Gill slits are separate without operculum. Operculum means the gill covering. So gill slits are separate without operculum. They have powerful jaw and are predators. They are actually predators. It includes shark and all they are predators right so air bladder is absent hence to avoid sinking swims constantly so they swim constantly to avoid sinking so they because their air bladder is absent and heart is two chamber cold bladder that is poikilothermic they can they have to they don't have a fixed body temperature they have to change the body temperature according to the changing environment Electric organ is present in torpedo and poison sting in trigo. Electric organ is present in torpedo. 
torpedo is an organism. So for them, electric organ is present and poison sting in trigon. Poison sting is present in trigon. Example, scoliodon, carcarodron, etc. Next class, class Ostictus. They are marine and fresh water. Both have bony endoskeleton. Their endoskeleton is made up of bones. They have streamlined body with four pairs of gills covered by operculum. They have a gill covering. They have four pairs of gills covered by operculum. Skin is covered with scales. Air bladder is present. Heart is two chambered. Cold blooded. Sexes are separate. Male and female are separate. Fertilization is external. Oviparous and development is direct. They, they are oviparous that is a gland and their development is direct. Examples include marine, hippocampus, sea horse will come in this. Exocetus, flying fish, freshwater labio, rohu, cutla, clarias. All these are examples for class Ostictus. Superclass Tetrapoda. Superclass Tetrapoda is again classified into four main classes. That is Amphibia, Class Reptilia, Class Avis and Class Mammalia. It includes Amphibia, Reptilia, Avis and Mammalia. So we will now See the features of each class in detail. First class, class Amphibia. They can live in aquatic as well as terrestrial habitat. Actually, class Amphibia includes frogs, toads, salamanders and all. So, they can live in aquatic as well as terrestrial habitat. That's the specialty of Amphibians. Amphibians can live in both land and water. They have Two pairs of limbs. Limbs means the appendages, the legs and hands. So, they have two pairs of limbs. Moist skin without scale. Their skin is moist. Like it's having like uh, fluid appearance will be there. So, moist skin without scales. Scales are absent in the case of amphibians. Respiration by gills, lungs or skin. So, mu mu moist skin helps in the process of respiration. So, respiration can be by the help of gills, lungs or skin. Hard, three-chambered, cold-blooded. They have a three-chambered heart. They are cold-blooded. Cold-blooded means they can change their body temperature according to the surrounding. Then they are oviparous. Oviparous means egg-laying animals. Oviparous is egg-laying and viviparous is giving birth. So, they are oviparous. So, that is they lay eggs. Examples, salamander, hyla, rana, that is frog. So, all these are examples for amphibia. So, these are the main features of class amphibia. Aquatic as well as terrestrial. Two pairs of limbs. Moist skin without scales. Respiration can be by gills, lungs or skin. Heart is three-chambered, cold-blooded, oviparous. Now coming to the next class, class reptilia. So, they are mostly terrestrial animals. Reptilians are mostly terrestrial animals. Limp, two pair if present. If they have limp, that will be two pairs. Some are without limbs, like snakes and all, they don't have limbs. So, if limb is present, that will be two pairs of limbs will be present. They have dry and cornified skin having scale or skewed. That is what? They have dry, cornified, like corn, uh, ha rough, hard, corn-shaped appearance. You can see the skin. They are uh, like corns can be seen on this. So, they have dry and cornified skin having scales or skewed. This is Scoot. The scales are present on the body of the snakes. So these are scoots. So they are having dry and cornified skin, having scale or scoot. 
then respiration by lungs since they are terrestrial they respire by the help of lungs they have three chambered heart like amphibians they have three chambered heart except for the crocodile crocodile have four chambered heart only exception is crocodile in case of reptiles only crocodiles will have four chambered heart all other animals will be having three chambered heart then they are oviparous that is egg laying examples chameleon crocodilus naja etc coming to the next class next class class avis features of class avis presence of feather for flying that anyway you know the features of avis we will just recap that set we have been studying the features of avis from the smaller classes onwards so the presence of feathers for flying they have feathers for flying four limb is modified into wings their four limb that is the limb in front is modified into wings then skin is dry without glands their skin is dry without glands the long bones are hollow with air cavities their bones long bones that is hollow bones with air cavity so that less weight so that it can fly on air fly in air respiration by lungs they respire by lungs heart is four chambered warm blooded they are warm blooded warm blooded means they have a fixed body temperature they cannot change their body temperature according to the changing environment then they are oviparous that is egg laying oviparous means egg laying examples certain birds right pavo ostrich crow all these are examples columba all these are examples for class a so that's about class a now about the last class that is class mammalia mammalia include humans so mostly terrestrial a few can fly and live in water few of them can fly and they some can live in water mostly terrestrial they have two pairs of limbs skin possesses hairs small hairs will be present mammary gland is present to produce milk mammalia that's why they have got the name mammalia since they have mammary glands for the production of milk respiration by lungs they respire by the help of lungs heart is four chambered warm blooded they are viviparous or oviparous viviparous some are oviparous some are egg laying mammals are there platypus and all egg laying mammals viviparous means they give birth to young ones platypus oviparous camel dog blue whale elephant lion cat tiger all these are examples for class mammalia so that's about super class tetrapoda so we have seen about the super class of spices which include contractors and ostrictors and tetrapoda which include class amphibia reptilia avis and mammalia so with this we can conclude the chapter and that's all for today thank you